Well, today I want to talk about how to get ultra sharp images, something that I have always wanted to do, and I hope you do too. And I'm going to show you some techniques that I think will surprise you. And so let's talk about this a little bit. Now, I get emails as an educator and um, someone who's out there. I get people uh, that will email me um, or uh, message me somehow and say, Hey, Joel, um, I've got the same camera lens you have, but somehow my images are not coming out uh, as sharp as I'd like them. And so I, um, you know, usually if I can get back to that person, I say, well, it's not the camera, it's not the lens. Now, sometimes it is. And if you've ever dropped a lens or something, you might have an issue with your lens. But generally, um, especially if you go to your sweet spot of the lens, which is two to three stops from wide open, and we know uh, hopefully by now that if you've been around photography, if you shoot wide open, you get aberration. That's a, a degradation of overall image uh, uh, quality. But with the new modern lenses, they have uh, counted that quite a bit, and most of the new lenses that are coming out, especially the Canon RF lenses, when I shoot them wide open, absolutely stunning, beautiful. Um, and so we're in good times. Now, if you shoot all the way down to say F22, you get diffraction, which is an overall degradation. And there's nothing you can do really about that optically wise. That's just the way optics are, the laws of optics. You're gonna get a less uh, or a, a, a overall degraded image when you shoot down to a small aperture. Now, sometimes you have to do that. You have to shoot wide open or you have to shoot down to F22. And I talk a lot about that, uh, especially when I'm shooting landscapes. Um, and we can do stack focus, which is an unbelievable technique. And I, I've covered that extensively and I do that in my landscape masterclass. So um, that's, we're in good times. We got some amazing things today that we can do to help us uh, minimize, um, you know, getting a soft image or an image that's not up to par. Now, I'm going to tell you something that um, I've said for years, and I heard this from the very first semester of photography uh, that I had back at 19 years old, back when I was starting out as a photographer, studying photography. My professor, Lou Bernal, said, the single greatest degradation of image quality is camera shake or vibration. Now, we don't hear that too often, um, and, and so we do have some incredible... Uh, things that technology that we have, the IS. Um, not every uh, lens that I have is an IS lens, but most of them now are. So image stabilization lens. Now the camera bodies have image stabilization. So it gives us uh, the ability to hand hold a uh, camera at slower shutter speeds. But I can tell you right now, I've done all the tests. If you put, I don't care what it is, you put your camera on a tripod and you take a picture it's gonna be sharper than when you hand hold it. I have proven that over and over. I have photo assistants that I've had over the years and I'm out doing a campaign, an ad campaign, and I've got a lifestyle shoot and I'm in a scenario where probably I should be hand holding a camera. And, but I say, get my tripod, let's do it. And they're like, why don't you just hand hold it? I go, well, because this is gonna be a billboard. I don't want, I want to get the sharpest image I possibly can and I'm willing to take uh, the risk of forcing myself to limit myself on a tripod versus hand holding. Now, there are some photographers that have styles that they would never go on a tripod. That's okay. And um, if you look at my behind the scenes of me shooting uh, over the years, very rarely will you ever see me hand holding a camera. That's the way I work. And when I was in the, uh, let's see, the 90s, I submitted uh, my images to stock photo agencies and um, over the years I would you know they get new photo editors or I, there are multiple photo editors they call me up and they say hey we need this picture Joel or whatever and they say almost every time they'd say oh we have a question for you um, we uh, noticed and everyone here at the agency notices that your images are by far the sharpest of all the photographers that submit to our agency what lenses are you using? Well, and I would reply, it's not the lenses, though it, you can get a lemon lens and there are lenses that are sharper than others. But it's, I would say, it's not the lens, it's the fact that I'm always shooting on a tripod. And for years I carried sandbags and I always would, in a, my car or whatever, and I, sometimes I'd carry them out in the desert or whatever and I'd hook it onto my, uh, the bottom of my tripod and to give it a little bit more stability, especially when the wind's blowing a little bit. 
Um, I, you can use your camera bag to do that, or there's other things you can do. I have, I have sandbags too that are empty, and I'll climb up on some mountain, do shoot, and it's a little windy, I'll go and fill it up with rocks, and then I'll hook it on there. Um, so I'm always thinking about how to keep my camera as stable as possible because it gives me the best results. That's important to me. Now, there are some photographers in their style is like, mm, shoot from the hip, whatever. Uh, and that's okay. I'm just telling you that if you want to get ultra sharp pictures, you need to think and you need to understand about uh, the value of a tripod. And some of you may know that. So a lot of photographers will say, hey, I'm getting into photography. Is there something that maybe you, uh, you, know, you could uh, give me some pointers on? I go, do you have a stable tripod? And they'll pull out this really ricky dink thing they bought at you know, uh, Walmart uh, for you know, $36 and it's like wobbly. Um, and I say, that's not the right tripod to get. Get one that's stable. Now, I'm gonna show you a tip. So stick with me. I'm gonna show you a little tip here in a minute that I, probably you've never seen unless I've said it somewhere else because uh, it's a pretty incredible little uh, technique to uh, test whether or not you are on a stable tripod. So I want to show you something and that is ugh, this big daddy right here. This is a Gitzo. It weighs about 20 pounds. I carried this all over uh, the country and I think I've even shipped it to uh, different countries around the world. Back when I was shooting 4x5, you see this camera back there, that's my old 4x5 that I used for 10 years shooting Type 55 Polaroid portraits around the world. Um, and uh, almost always I would have it on a tripod like this, a very, very heavy, stable tripod. Now, times have gotten really good. Uh, we have tripods today that are better than ever. The design and the, the, you know, the carbon fiber and all that is getting better and better. I currently own uh, uh, two really right uh, stuff tripods. Um, this one is a, uh, let's see, is it two? It's two legs, three sections, two sections. One, two, it has to be two sections. They make a three section one also. Um, this is, I'm not sure what model. I'll try to get the link of what model this is in the uh, description below. But a ball head, I, you saw there I had the bigger ball head. That's a, a 50, they think this is a 40. I think that's a 30 ball head. Um, and this is my main tripod right here. I've had this probably 10 years. Uh, it looks pretty good because I have a case for it. I really baby this thing. It's a little pricey. Now, one of the things that I talk about, and I've done this uh, for, for a long time, I've said, said that if you're going to make an investment in a tripod, you usually make that investment for a lifetime. I say a lifetime because things have changed so much, but let's say minimum of 10 years uh, before you maybe upgrade your tripod. Uh, this thing, I've already had 10 years. I'll have another 10 years and it probably will look, you know, maybe a little more banged up, but it'll work just as well. So when you invest in a tripod, it's really more for a long term. You, you know, this body, this R5, and, and you know, I'm going to probably update that here, you know, in a year or so. A new, more megapixels, something will come out. Uh, but a tripod will last you a long, long, long time. Lenses tend to last you a little longer too. So when you make your investment, this is for a long period of time. So, uh, you know, putting, ten, uh, putting $1,000 into a tripod or maybe a little more, it seems a little outrageous, but it's not in the long term term and the value that it brings. Now I have a smaller tripod here. Uh, it's still a really right stuff. And this thing I use when I go back, say backpacking or I'm going to hike three, four miles back in. As I get older, it's a little harder for me to carry a lot of heavy weight. I don't want to admit that. I'm not 25 anymore. Um, I hate to even tell you how old I am. But um, uh, so I have these two tripods and I always carry one with me. So in a certain scenario, I'll pull this out, but I always try to go with this. Now, if I'm uh, shooting in a studio, you'll also see me shoot on a tripod almost all the time. And people scratch their heads thinking, well, doesn't the flash freeze the image enough to, um, to give you uh, a sharp image? And so I always say, test it. I I'll prove it to you. If you handhold at one two hundredth of a second, I'll prove it to you that in our flash scenario, studio, lights, no skylights, you know, it's a dark studio, I get a better result shooting from this than I do handheld. Just the way it works. It's the way optics work. Now, um, 
Again, you can't always shoot from a tripod, but I do. I tip typically do. That's my style. All right. But what I want you to do to learn is that if you are struggling with a little bit, they say, my images don't seem to be as sharp as they should be. Um, uh, do your tests and to uh, see, um, you know, side by side, if in fact you put it on a tripod, you get a better result. Do the test. All right, I'm going to show you a test. This is where the this is where the little little technique comes in that I want to show you. That's really kind of clever. Now I did not come up with this technique. A friend of mine back in Denver days, an engineer, uh, Mark. I can't remember his last name now, but it's been too long. Um, we were talking one day, and he had three tripods in his back of his car. On the tripod, he had a piece of tape on each one of them. And it's a 600 F4, a 300 2.8, or whatever. And then this one would say 7200 down to whatever. And then he'd have, you know, three tripods. And I'm like, what is that? And he said, well, what I've done is I've taken a little mirror and I've taped it to each one of the lenses that I want to, you know, test the scenario. I set this up on a tripod. And then I go through, like, say, a one second exposure just to test it. And I say, okay, let's put uh, this camera on this combination lens combo and then what you do is you get um, you can do this outdoors you can do it like in my my living room this morning I kind of tested this the Sun comes in and it'll hit this you can actually take a spotlight maybe a hot light that hot light does that give it yeah there's a little bit of a reflection there on the wall but you want the Sun is much better so it comes in it hits this and it projects uh, a the reflection of this mirror onto a wall of some sort something where you can see it and then what you do is you go through your scenario and you take a picture. So let's say I, I do it by handheld. I, just, I mean, not handheld, but I trigger it with just no timer or no, we don't use cable releases really anymore, but we put a timer on there to, to, to minimize vibration. But let's say you go handhold and you click. And if you see that little mirror go, or the reflection of that mirror in, on the wall shake, you know that you're going to get a soft picture. It's not going to be as, as sharp. So you, you do your combo, so you say, okay, I'm gonna put my two, two second timer on. Hit it, and then watch it, and if it doesn't shake, you go, good combo, right? But if you put a, a 600 F4 lens, you're doing wildlife photography or something, and you put it on this little guy, you're probably gonna get some shake. So you say, not a good combo. So you go through, or maybe what you do is you take this, you set it up and it gets a little shake. You say, what if I put a 25 pound sandbag on it or my camera bag? Oh, hey, that minimized the shake. So you can go and test the combo of your lenses and your tripods to give you the best combo. So you know that if you're out in the field and there's a little bit of wind, grab the big daddy. And if you know that you say, I gotta go on a hike and you know I've got to carry this, but it's a little windy and I've got my 300 millimeter I'm gonna have to put my uh, camera bag or uh, get a system where you put some rocks in a bag and hang it on your tripod when you're out in the middle of nowhere. So, um, kind of fun to do that. And you could also do that with a, a laser. If you have a laser pointer, um, and I have one somewhere, but I just moved into this office and it's buried somewhere, but I've done that where I take a piece of tape, I tape it up against the lens and it's shooting out and I can see it against the wall and then I do my combo and the little laser thing uh, does a little bounce, you know that you're uh, not in a good combo. So I hope you learned something on this. It's always fun. I want you guys to take uh, pictures that you are proud of, that you can blow up to, you know, whatever. And um, this is just a little uh, side uh, tip that, that will help you do that. Check out my new uh, Joel Grimes Landscape Masterclass. I did uh, 20 days uh, 10 days in Utah, 10 days in Oregon, and I um, filmed me doing landscapes. I started out as a landscape photographer, by the way, uh, carrying big tripods like that all over. And um, so uh, there's a link below for that. So I hope you enjoy this. If you like this too, uh, and this content, I want to keep making more of this content. So uh, do a subscribe and uh, notifications. That way you can keep in touch with what I'm doing, and I hope to see you soon.